Hey folks, welcome to another Passion for Sound audio review. Much like a couple of other videos I've done recently, this one includes multiple products, but is not really a battle. And that's because I've got three fantastic IEMs to share with you today that are all excellent in some ways with imperfections in other areas. And so my aim for this review is to share with you each of them individually, and then compare all three to help you work out which one would be the best fit for you based on your personal listening preferences and the type of music you listen to. So come with me now as we take a look at the Custom Art Feebay 3x3, the Shure EJ07M and the Kiwi Is Orchestra. Because this review isn't a battle, I haven't really structured it in a specific order, so I'm just going to get to each IEM as I happen to pick it up when I was doing my listening tests. And that means we're starting with the Custom Art Feebay 3x3. This IEM retails for $700 US dollars or thereabouts. The pricing's in Euro because they're a Polish company. And so depending on the exchange rate, it's going to be a little bit more or maybe a little bit less than $700 US dollars. Custom Art have been around for quite a long time now. I reviewed many, many years ago one of their first ever custom IEMs, one of their budget models, and it was a lovely IEM. And I have to say, the trend's continuing with the 3x3, but it's even better now. Also, this isn't a budget model as such. At 700 US dollars, it sits towards the upper end of what I would call mid-tier. The 3x3 is available as either a universal or a custom version. I'm technically reviewing the universal version here, and there can often be some slight improvements going to a custom version, so do keep that in mind. But regardless of which version you get, what's included within the 3x3 are three balanced armatures per side, hence the name, and importantly, and this is where the Feebay bit comes from, they're a flat impedance design. And so what that means is that you've got multiple balanced armatures working together, but rather than all having different impedances and therefore at different frequencies, the earphone is harder or easier to drive, Custom Art have come up with a technique to make all of the impedances dead flat. And that's important because on some sources, particularly with a very low impedance, like the 8 ohm impedance of the Custom Arts, if you connect that to a source with anything over about a 1 ohm output impedance, that can actually alter the sonic performance of the IEM. And so by making it a flat impedance at all frequencies, you're guaranteed to hear what the IEM is meant to share with you, regardless of the source you plug it into. So it's a nice feature. It's not probably a huge, huge deal, because most good devices these days will have an output impedance under 1 ohm, but it's still a nice piece of security that you can plug it into any source you might want to. While we're talking about the design of the IEM, the benefit of having only three balanced armatures per side is that the 3x3 is a very compact design. It uses what I often call sort of a pseudo custom shape, where it's got a molded shape similar to a custom, but then of course it's got the nozzle for the tips to make it universal. What you might notice though, either here or in the Glamour video, is that it's a very thin design. It's no more than about maybe one centimetre or about nine millimetres thick at its thickest part, not including the nozzle of course, and that means it sits very, very flush in the ear and is incredibly comfortable. In addition to being nicely designed and very, very comfortable, when you buy a set of 3x3s, you also get a very nice, what I would call a pro-style cable. It's fairly lightweight, but good quality. It's just a simple black twisted style cable, but it feels very good quality, and I like the fact that it's fairly lightweight and fairly subtle. So if you're not looking for a blingy IEM, these are a great option. As well as the cable, the other things you get with the 3x3s are you get a small range of tips, so the selection isn't huge, but what you do get is good quality. There's a handful of silicon tips, both single flange and one pair of double flange tips. And whilst there's not a huge range of options, they feel like they're good quality, they fit well, and they're very comfortable. So the accessory range is generally pretty good from the custom arts. The final thing worth mentioning is they also come with a fairly hefty case. 
Now I'm guessing this is because you can buy these as a custom, and if you're traveling around with a custom IEM, you're probably going to enjoy the fact that this case separates the two shells of your IEMs and stops them banging together when you're traveling around. It does make for a larger case that's not going to fit in very many pockets, but if you're happy to chuck it in a bag, it means your IEMs are very well protected. So all in all, I think the 3x3s are well accessorized. They're not exceptional in any area in terms of their accessories. They're not exceptional anywhere in their build quality, but they're really solid and they're definitely at a level that I would expect when spending this sort of money. Beyond their build and accessories though, the big question of course is how do they sound? And my first reaction when listening to the 3x3s was that I felt they were just a little bit lean. They lack some base extension and some base weight. They actually roll off quite a bit in the base. And so my first thought was I was a little bit disappointed at the lack of base. But as I listened more, I heard where their magic lies. The 3x3 is able to extract all sorts of detail and texture from the music, and yet it does it while staying wonderfully smooth and beautifully tonally balanced. Listening to vocals through the 3x3, what you're going to hear is a wonderful balance of richness and body in the vocals, but still plenty of texture and air as well. They're an absolutely wonderful IEM for vocal lovers. And that carries through to instruments as well. If you listen to, say, acoustic guitars or even electric guitars from the 3x3s, what you're going to hear is a sound where there's a good sense of attack and clarity on things like the strum or the picking of the strings, but then the harmonic richness and resonance that needs to follow. Imaging and separation are also very good from the 3x3. They don't have the largest soundstage of the IEMs that I'm going to be talking about here, but what they do within that soundstage is fantastic. Each sound is really clearly placed, there's a nice sense of space between each sound and the other sounds around it, and they're just really a joy to listen to. There's no doubt I would have liked to hear more bass from the 3x3s, but as you'll hear me talk about as we go through the rest of these IEMs, any time you increase the bass, for instance, in an IEM, you're trading off something else in return. The same is true for treble and for mid-range as well. So it's not a simple fix of saying give it more bass and it fixes it. Giving it more bass would actually rob it of some of its magic. And so I think these, being the 3x3s, are a wonderful IEM for those looking for vocal clarity, instrumental clarity, listening to genres that don't rely so much on bass depth. The 3x3 can give you a truly wonderful experience. But in other ways, so can some of the other IEMs. So let's move on and look at the other IEMs and then I'll compare and contrast all of them at the end on a couple of different tracks so you can work out which one might be the best choice for you. And with that in mind, let's look next at the Kiwi Ears Orchestra. We've jumped from the most expensive IEM in this roundup to the cheapest IEM in this roundup. The Kiwi Ears Orchestra retail for about $500 US dollars, and I want to thank Linsol for sending these to me for review. They're not a brand or a model that I was familiar with until it was suggested by Linsol, and I'm very glad that I've had a chance to hear them. Much like the Custom Art 3x3s, the Kiwi Ears Orchestra are a multi-balanced armature design, but on this occasion, they're using eight drivers per side. The Kiwi Ears are only available as a universal, so there's no custom option for these, but they're once again a beautifully designed acrylic housing. Because of the eight drivers, they're a bit thicker than what you get from Custom Art, but I'm pleased to say that they're still very, very comfortable, and in fact, I'd have a hard time separating whether the Kiwi Ears or the 3x3s are the more comfortable IEM. Where things differ a bit, still talking about accessories and build quality, etc., is that the Kiwi has come with a heavier cable than what you get on the Custom Art 3x3, and it's also a slightly blingier cable. It's not over the top, but as you can see, it's a plain, sort of bright copper looking cable. That said, it's a lovely cable with high quality connectors and a really nice weave and insulation. While we're talking accessories still, the tip selection for the Kiwi Ears Orchestra is very similar in quality to those from Custom Art, but there aren't quite as many options. There's no double flange tips, but the tips you get are comfortable, the options seem good enough, and the quality of the silicon seems good. So no complaints, it would have been nice to see a few more tips, but not a big deal. The final accessory that comes with the Kiwi Ears is a leather clamshell style case. It's nothing special, we've seen this kind of case before, and it's plenty good enough. There's enough space for the IEMs to go in comfortably, a good sense of protection, and some space for a few tips. So it's a nice accessory, and as you'll hear shortly, a better choice than some others. Before we get the payoff on that bit of foreshadowing though, let's talk about the Kiwi Ears Orchestra in terms of sound quality. These are actually quite similar again to the 3x3s in their sound quality, much as they are in their build. And that is to say that they're again a mid-range focused IEM, with also a bit of extra treble emphasis this time too. They're wonderful once again on vocals, very good at texture and detail retrieval, but they're a bit more aggressive and a bit more energetic than what you get from the 3x3s. 
listening to music where there's cymbal hits from a drum kit. What you hear from the Kiwi ears is both a wonderful sense of attack and that sharpness of the drumstick hitting the cymbal, but then also a lovely shimmer and resonance coming through as well. I'm not saying it's necessarily better than the others because of that, but it does it very well. As I've already said, the general tonality and timbre of instruments is very, very natural and very, very good from the Kiwi ears. And one area that they particularly excel in this overall roundup is they throw a beautiful big soundstage. I'm not sure that it's the biggest soundstage I've heard from an IAM, but it's a good sized soundstage. It stretches a little bit outside the head and it's got a bit of depth to it as well. It's worth noting that while the Kiwi ears do have a little bit more bass than the 3x3s, they're still overall a bass shy IAM. They do lack a bit of extension and presence because the bass rolls off quite early. And so overall, I'd describe the Kiwi Ears Orchestra as being very similar to the 3x3, but with a bit more attack and energy and a bit less overall smoothness. What you're getting is a trade-off there, and remember before I said everything's a trade-off, by having that bit of extra treble energy and therefore that bit less smoothness, what we get is a larger, more expansive sounding soundstage. So these are going to be a great choice for people that want a mid-range and a slightly treble-focused IEM with a great sense of soundstage and plenty of energy and attack without, in almost all cases, going too far into any harshness or sibilance. I will share with you a track in a moment that does go too far, but it's more about the track being mixed quite aggressively rather than the IEM itself. But we'll get to that soon. First, let's take a look at our third IEM, which is the Shure EJ07M. The EJ07M sits literally right in the middle of this roundup. At $600, US it's exactly halfway between the Custom Art 3x3 at $700 and the Kiwi Ears Orchestra at $500. US The EJ07M is also available as Universal or Custom, but if you're buying the EJ07M, you're getting the Universal version because the Custom is just the EJ07. Where the Shures depart a little bit from the others, though, is in their internal design. Unlike the customer and the Kiwi ears, the shoers use more than just balanced armatures. Inside each of these shells, what you'll find is a dynamic driver, some balanced armature drivers, and a couple of electric or electrostatic drivers. Now I'm differentiating electric and electrostatic here because technically these are electric drivers, meaning that they don't need a high voltage energizer to make them work. So you can plug these into any source you like and they'll work just fine, unlike a true electrostatic. Where the electric drivers are great though, is that they can still provide an an excellent sense of treble clarity and speed. And that therefore is their role here. So you've got the dynamic driver taking care of bass, the balanced armatures for the mid-range and the electrics for the treble. The shoes use a slightly different design of shell overall because they're actually a metal shell and it's a lovely feeling, high quality design. It feels extremely well made and also very comfortable. Perhaps not quite as comfortable as the acrylic models, but still very, very good. In addition to a lovely design, you get an excellent cable, which funnily enough is also kind of a halfway point between the other two. It's thinner than the Kiwi Ears Orchestra, and it's also a bit darker. So it's using kind of a brownie bronzy color instead of the bright copper, but it's not quite as thin or as black as the Custom Art 3x3. All in all, I think all three IEMs come with nice cables, nice accessories, and good build quality. The shoers do stand out a little bit with their choice of tips because they come with two different sets of silicons and a set of foam tips. So for those of you that like to play around with tips, there's a few more options from the shoers and they're all very good quality as well. Where things go a little bit off the rail for the shoers though, is the case they come with. And there's not really any way I can explain the problem with this as well as by giving you a demonstration. I'd like to apologize in advance for what I'm about to do to your ears. Don't worry, I've kept the volume low and I apologize for what I'm about to do, but it's really the only way to show you just how horrendous this case is. Now I didn't exaggerate that with how long it took, that's how long it takes to open every single time, and it's just as bad when you put the lid back on. So don't worry, I'm not going to put the lid back on now because I've tortured your ears enough. As you can probably tell from that demonstration, I never ever want to use this case. I would prefer to throw these in my bag and have them bashed to death than ever have to open and close this case again. So I apologize to your ears for doing that, but hopefully you understand now why I think that case is an abomination. It's not a reason to not buy the EJ07M, but I really think Shua should rethink that one. Whether they go for a magnetic case or some sort of zip case, there are so many better options out there, I don't know why they chose that screw top metal case. 
while we're talking about drawbacks, and I should stress, neither of these are deal breakers. The EJ07M are a lovely IEM, as I'll get to in a moment. But before I get to that, I do want to cover off the one other fly in the ointment. And that is that whenever you insert the Shua EJ07M into your ear, you're going to hear driver flex. If you're not familiar with driver flex, or maybe you don't know it by name, Driver flex is what happens when you put an IEM in your ear and it's got a dynamic driver without sufficient venting to balance out the pressure. What that means is that as the pressure builds as you put the IEM in your ear, it pushes back on the dynamic driver and it crinkles the driver. What you hear is like somebody taking a lolly wrapper and kind of crinkling it right inside your ear canal. It's not dangerous or loud for you, it doesn't do any damage at all to the drivers, but it's not a pleasant sound. It's something I expect to hear occasionally on cheap, basic IEMs, I definitely don't expect it on a $600 US dollar IEM. So I do think it's a shame. Like I said, it's not a deal breaker. It doesn't prevent me from enjoying them. It doesn't do any damage to them or to me, but I do think it's a bit of a shame. With that speed bump out of the way though, let me tell you now why I still think the EJ07M are a great potential choice. And that is that they've got a wonderful overall sound quality. As a complete departure from the other two IEMs in this roundup, the EJ07M has bass. If you want it to be brain rattling bass, depending on the tracks you're listening to or your use of EQ, it absolutely can be. But on most music, it's just a lovely sense of presence and depth. And that's because overall, the EJ07M has a fairly flat bass response that kicks up in the sub bass to bring a sense of presence and weight and authority to the sound without ever sounding bloated or artificial. Now I know some people value punch and slam and terms like that, but to me that's not something I generally look for in an IEM because if you're getting punch and slam across all sorts of music from an IEM, what it generally means is that it's been tuned with a bit of a boost in the mid bass. And whilst that can be fun on certain tracks, it can come back and bite you on others, and so it's not something I listen for. I bring that up because the EJ07M are not a specifically punchy or slammy IEM, unless the track calls for it. And that's because the boost in the bass is right down low in the sub bass, so it just brings authority and presence most of the time. But if you do have a very punchy track, they've got the chops to deliver it. Before it sounds like these are just the base monster of the review, they're certainly not. They're actually a relatively flat IEM overall in terms of their overall frequency response. And that means that they're bringing you both bass, but also mids and treble. So they've got an excellent sense of attack and clarity, not quite to the level of the Kiwi's orchestra, but not far behind it. They also produce a soundstage, which is just a hair smaller than the Kiwi's orchestra and imaging and image separation, that's right up there with these other two as well. So they're a really strong performer, just with a very different tuning compared to the other two. If I had to pick one hole in what the EJ07M does, and here we are back to this idea of trade-offs again, one thing that does plague the EJ07M just ever so slightly, and it's pretty minor in most cases, is that because they've got a bit of a scoop out in the lower mids, vocals can sound different depending on which register they're in. And what I mean by that is if you listen to a female vocal from the EJ07M, you're gonna hear a vocal that's got texture and air, but it's also got richness and smoothness as well. When you go to male vocals though, which are a bit lower in frequency, what you're then gonna hear is the same sense of texture and air, but not quite the same sense of richness. And that's because male vocals start to border into the area of the EJ07M's frequency response where it's getting scooped out a little bit. I can't stress enough that the EJ07M still sounds great on male and female vocals, but the two sound different. And that to me shows that there's just a slight inconsistency in the way these are tuned. Again, it's nowhere near a deal breaker. These are an amazing, fun, engaging IEM that I would highly recommend, particularly for genres that need a bit of extra bass. So whether it's rock, blues, pop, electronic music, these are definitely the best of the bunch for that sort of music, but they do come with certain trade-offs. And so to help contextualize all this and to help you work out which of these is the right set of pros and cons for you, let's now talk through two different tracks of music and talk to you about what each IEM did well and not so well across both. The first track I made notes on was Fan the Flames by Gregory Porter. And this was the track I referred to before where I think the mix is just a little bit too aggressive. Starting off listening with the Kiwi ears, what I heard was a sound where the horns at the beginning of this track were just a bit uncomfortable and a little bit harsh. And I can't stress enough, this is not the fault of the Kiwi ears orchestra, but it does go to show that when you get an IM with a bit more attack and a bit more energy up top, 
it can sometimes come back to bite you. And so whilst for the most part, the Kiwi ears are constantly just below the line of discomfort, and I mean that in a good way, they produce a sense of clarity and attack, which is almost always enjoyable. But on a track like Fan the Flames, which are fairly few and far between, the Kiwi ears orchestra did bite just a little bit, and I had to pull back the volume in order to enjoy it. As you'd expect from what I said before about the Kiwi ears, Gregory Porter's vocals here sound absolutely fantastic but there is a little bit of sibilance because of that slightly aggressive mix. Something that the Kiwi Ears Orchestra does really well on a track like this is it helps you hear some of the details in the music that you might otherwise miss. So something like the rattle of a double bass string when the bass player is plucking the string, you can hear that rattle easily from the Kiwi Ears Orchestra, but not so much from the other two. It's not that it's not there from the other two, it's just more accessible from the orchestra. And so if you love hearing all of the details and the textures in your music, without it pulling it apart too much, it still stays nice and coherent, that's where the Kiwi Ears Orchestra is a great IM for me. I've got another example coming up where we'll talk about a different sort of track, but for now let's move on to the EJ07M to contrast it with what I've just told you. The EJ07M comes across more balanced than the Kiwi Ears Orchestra, but it is still quite an aggressive and energetic sound on this track. And overall, out of these three IEMs, I'd say the Kiwi Ears Orchestra is the most aggressive, the EJ07M is just a half step behind it, and then it's probably another full step down to the 3x3, which is not in any way overly rich and warm and smooth, but it's not as energetic as the other two. Where the EJ07M shines on this track is all of a sudden the drums actually have presence and weight and body. The Kiwi Ears Orchestra sounded a bit lightweight on the bass as you'd expect, whereas the EJ07M fixes that by having the presence behind the drums. Once again, the horns from the EJ07M on this track are a little bit too forward. They're not quite as sharp and harsh and uncomfortable as they are from the Kiwi Ears Orchestra, but they do still occasionally cross into the territory of being just a bit too much, particularly on things like the trumpet solo when they hit the high notes. Overall, what I found was that the EJ07M on a track like this is a little bit more listenable overall. It's less uncomfortable, but with that comes the fact that it brings a little bit less energy and excitement as well. And so let's move on to the FIVE 3x3 to give you a further comparison point. Playing Fan the Flames through the 3x3, and the sound is just sublime, except for the bass, which is kind of not there. But listening to the vocals, the trumpets, the drums in the upper register, all of that is just magic from the 3x3. They've got a good sense of attack overall, but never too much. These somehow manage to not stray into the harshness and sibilance that I heard from the other two on this track, and if it weren't for the lack of bass, they'd be pretty close to perfect. That doesn't mean they're the best I am in this bunch, as I'll share with you in a moment, but it goes to show just how good they are at balancing a combination of clarity and detail with smoothness and enjoyment. They definitely lean more towards clarity than they do to smoothness, but they balance it beautifully. Having listened to all three of these on Fan the Flames, my leaning was probably towards the 3x3 if you made me choose one, but it's not like the other two were bad, it's just that the 3x3 had a slight advantage for me on this particular track. Before you think that makes it the best I am in the bunch though, I then wanted to see what happened if I deliberately put on a track that needs bass. And this isn't my full second comparison track, I'll get to that in a moment, but I very briefly put on Battle Without Honour or Humanity by Hote. This track requires bass to give it the emotion and the engagement that it should have, and both the Kiwi Ears Orchestra and the Fibe 3x3 from Custom Art, they both felt a little bit emotionless. The EJ07M brought all of that rumble and emotion that you need in this track, and suddenly made it exciting. So this is what I mean about the trade-offs. Each of these IEMs has things it does incredibly well, none of them are perfect, and so it's about finding the one that fits your needs. To help you further, let's move on to my final comparison track with a bit of detail on a classical composition. And specifically, we're talking about Mahler's Symphony No. 6. Listening to this recording on the Kiwi ears, and all of a sudden I was hearing again what I like so much about them. A wonderful sense of clarity and attack, all sorts of detail and texture from the orchestra. It was just a lovely rendition. Their sense of space and scale in the soundstage does wonders for orchestral music because you can really hear the whole orchestra spread out in front of you. In fact, really the only criticism I could level at the Kiwi ears here was that I would have liked a bit more bass presence for the lower registers of the orchestra. It wasn't something that I noticed a huge deal because the roll off in the bass happens gradually, so it's not like there's a hole in the music, but when I thought about it critically, I did feel like I wanted just a bit more presence. That said, the overall experience was incredibly enjoyable. 
Moving on to the 3x3s, and they were a very interesting listen here. When they got things right, they were absolutely incredible. Just an amazing representation of the orchestra. I think their imaging really sets them apart in this regard, where every single sound while still coherent, has its clear spot in the mix. So you can very clearly hear where the violin section is, the violas and the cellos, the horns, the woodwind, the timpanis, etc. Everything's really nicely clarified, and yet still very coherent. It doesn't split anything apart, it's just like it brings everything into focus. And I love that about them. The reason I'm not saying they're perfect, though, is that every now and again, it was like the tonality was just a bit off. And I can't put my finger on exactly what it was, exactly which instruments it is, but what I was hearing was that most of the time I was loving what I was hearing from the 3x3, and then just every now and again I'd go, oh, what was that? And it was just something a little bit distracting and a little bit off-putting. And that's where I'm saying they're not perfect. I think the Kiwi is orchestra, ironically enough, delivered a better performance of orchestral music. It was more consistent across the board, and whilst the 3x3 occasionally hit heights that I don't think the Kiwi is orchestra quite managed, they also occasionally threw a bit of a curveball in the mix. And so both are excellent, but on this one, I'm probably starting to lean more towards the Kiwi Ears Orchestra. But before I close it out there, let me talk about the EJ07M. That suddenly brings the presence and the body that I missed from both the 3x3 and the orchestra, but unfortunately it didn't do everything quite so well. That scoop out in the lower mids that I talked about before comes back to kind of bite the EJ07M a little bit on full range tracks like orchestral music. I didn't hear this show up so much on pop and blues and rock and those sorts of genres, but when it came to listening to an orchestral track, the EJ07M just sounded a bit off. And I think what's going on is that where both the custom art and the Kiwi is have a bass roll off, so you've kind of got the presence in the treble, the presence in the mids, and then it just gradually drifts away into the bass. With the shoers, what we get is we get treble detail, we get upper mid range detail, then there's kind of a hole in the mids, and then it suddenly comes back in the bass. And what that results in is it really kind of emphasizes the fact that there's a hole in the lower mids. And so that for me was a bit of an Achilles heel for the EJ07M when listening to orchestral music. Now I should be really clear here, they were in no way a bad listen and I would very happily have any of these IMs for any piece of music you ask me to listen to. But if I'm listening critically, if I'm trying to draw a contrast between these, then for me, the Kiwi Ears Orchestra and the Feebay 3x3 were comfortably better on the orchestral track than I felt the EJ07M was. The EJ07M was still lovely on that track, just as the Kiwi Ears Orchestra was still great on Fan the Flames. So it's not that any of them are ever bad, but each of them clearly has their strengths. And so with that in mind, let me wrap things up here by telling you when I would choose each of these IEMs, either if I was looking to buy one, or if I had all three and was trying to select which one to listen to when. For the Feebay 3x3, I would very comfortably pick it up, and in fact I would look forward to picking it up any time I was listening to anything that was focused on vocals and mid-range quality, so it might be instrumentals, it could be folk music, some more acoustic style jazz that you don't need too much bass presence, anything really where you want to hone in on the vocals, and even orchestral music too. With the Kiwi Ears Orchestra, it's fairly similar to what I just said about the 3x3, but in particular I'd reach for that when I want a more expansive soundscape. I think the 3x3 focuses the image a little bit better, whereas the orchestra presents the larger overall space. So depending on which one your preference is, that might help you choose. The other thing that separates these two is that the Kiwi Ears Orchestra does come across with more energy and attack in the sound, which as I've said on some tracks can go just a tiny bit too far, but that is pretty rare. For the most part it balances energy and attack very very well and stays in a comfortable zone. The 3x3s are smoother, but they're still very much a clarity and detail focused IEM. Finally, coming to the Shua EJ07M, it's a very different ball game. This is an IEM I would more recommend for genres that need that bass presence. So rock, pop, blues, electronica, anything where you want a bit of a rhythm and drive in the music, the EJ07M is great. It's not bad on orchestral, but I do think its strength lies more in those amplified, electronic style genres. And what I mean is genres where you've got electronically amplified guitars, bass guitars, etc, or music that is created electronically in the first place. So as you can probably see, each of these IEMs definitely has its place. I think all three are absolutely fantastic, and as I said, I would be happy listening to anything on any of them. I'm not going to pick a winner out of them, because I don't think that does justice to the two that don't win. 
They're all wonderful and they're all very much recommendations from me. And so with all that said, hopefully this has helped you narrow down your choices, work out which one's going to be a better fit for you. And if that's the case, and if you found this review useful, enjoyable, entertaining, etc., I'd love it if you'd hit subscribe, ring the notification bell, and hit the like button. It helps to tell me and YouTube the sorts of videos that you want to see more of. But for now, let me leave it with the music, so happy listening, and I'll see you here next time on Passion for Sound. Thank you.